Okay, so we are now on to part three, the last part of our first lab here. And this part only has three questions to it. You will have to do a little bit of research on this one. So we're looking at exploring tree ring sites around the world. So as you're looking at this map here, all of the little green um, triangles, those are showing you where there are tree ring sites at. So there's a lot here in the United States, especially over on the West Coast. And there's a few down in South America. This island over here has some. So some countries don't have any tree ring sites. Some have a lot of tree ring sites. So take a look at the huge number of published tree ring chronologies, green triangles, that have been made available to the public by scientists who originally collected them. Tree ring scientists contribute their data to the International Tree Ring Dan Data Bank. ITRDB to make the data available to other researchers and to be sure that the same sites are not visited multiple times. As you can see, there are thousands of tree ring chronologies from around the globe. Although most of them come from North America and Europe, there are also places there where there is very little data, parts like South America and Africa, for example. Sometimes that is because old trees don't grow in these regions, or the trees that do grow there do not produce annual rings, making them unsuitable for tree ring studies. It is also possible that the logistics of collecting old trees in these regions can be extremely difficult. In this activity, you will explore tree ring data sets available from the ITRDB. You will then focus on the work of these science investigators and their peer-reviewed research to help you understand how science works and how necessary collaboration is to do meaningful research in a tree ring science. So we're going to open up this database in a new window. Make sure that only tree ring data is selected on the list on the left, and then click on the Identify option on the Paleo Network Tools box. So the one thing about where we live, there really aren't any tree ring data places right next to us. Um, so over here on the networks, I'm gonna uncheck coral, ice core, ocean, let's see. All right, so I have tree ring. That is my only thing that I have selected. And I'm going to go with location. So I'm looking at, let's see, U.S. country, county um, in Pennsylvania. And the county that we are in right now is going to be Fayette. So let's see if we have anything. Nothing in Fayette County for us. No data to show. Um, why don't we try, let's see, what are some surrounding counties? Oh, we got one. Ferncliff Natural Area. So we have a natural area here. Okay, and clicked everything. Take a look at Westmoreland and see if there's anything near that area. And we're kind of batting zero here on all of them. Let's, see, let's take a look at Allegheny County. It doesn't really surprise me that there's nothing in Allegheny County, though, because that's pretty um, heavily populated. In Green County. Nothing in Forest County.
All right, so as we're looking here, we have a little green dot up here at the top. Oh, and there might be some underneath here. There we go. Okay, so we've got a few in this particular area. So these are the tree ring places. Not too close to us, not terribly close. They're definitely not in Pittsburgh. So once we get to here, so we've got the identify, pick three tree ring sites that of interest that you are located near your community in this, or in your state. When you click the identify tool, just click the tree ring that is interest you and then, okay. All right, so maybe this one here, Longfellow Trail. I can click on that one and record the name of the site, the investigator's name, and the coordinates on the table provided in your answer sheet. So this is going to be like for question number three. Number one, not question number three. Question number one. So the name of it is going to be Cook Longfellow Trail. And here's the longitude latitude information for it. Um, the originator is Cook ER. And these are different chronologies that you can see that were taken from that area. Here's a species, they're looking at different types of pine trees. So since we don't have that many in our area, you probably, you could only do those two unless you wanna go out more towards Philadelphia. So once you write down the name of, you know, two of those sites that are near you, for question number one. We're going to move on to question number two. And this one is saying to describe a research project that we found from Google Scholar and describe it in a few sentences in your own words. So we want to open up Google Scholar. I don't know if you've ever used this website before. You may or may not have, depending on what classes you had in high school. If you're going on to college, you probably definitely will use it. This site is a search engine that students and scientists use to research what has already been published on a topic. Type in the name of one of the investigators that you identified in the paleoclimatology data map in the search box. Add the words tree ring after their name. So I'm going to go with Cook Tree Ring. And there are some things published with the ER Cook guy or woman. One of the first things to note is how many times the publication has, be, has been cited in papers published by the scientific community. See the figure below, for example. The paper on O. Salamina has a co as a co-author has been cited by other publications 356 times, a measure of the impact the paper has on the scientific community. This is a large number of citations. You can also click on the Search for Related Articles tab, which is a handy feature. If you include the name of the region the data came from in the search box, you can narrow down publications. For example, typing in O. Solomina tree ring and then Kamchatka will result in a list of related publications specific to that region. Click on a few articles from the Google Scholar search for each investigator that you identified on the paleoclimatology map and read several abstracts. On your answer sheet, write the title of one of those that interests you and describe it in a few sentences. So for number two, if I just clicked on this one here, reconstructed mega droughts. This is the abstract. The abstract is basically a summary. So you're not reading the entire 
article by any means. You're just reading the abstract. And I want you to summarize what they are talking about in like two or three sentences. So don't go crazy with it. Don't read the entire paper. You probably won't understand a lot of the um, jargon that is in there. So don't worry about that. Just summarize it from the abstract. And the last question here, why do you think it's important to do a search of the literature before you embark on a research effort? So whenever you are thinking about a topic to research, you probably don't know a whole lot about it, at least when you're starting out. You come up with this idea and you think it's great. You need to know what other scientists have previously uncovered about your topic or the place you're planning on researching before you begin your efforts. Then that way you're not redoing what they've already done and you can build off that previous study or you could just confirm what they've already found. Tree ring scientists also want to be careful not to cord too many trees. So knowing if trees have been cored in that particular area would also be very important. If you remember back to that video that we watched um, with the girl who was coring the tree, she said that you only want to take about two cores per tree max. And that is it for this last part here. Alrighty guys, I'll talk to you later.